So I'm continuing with my focus on the Old Testament messianic prophecies. We did uh, the, the last two sermons were to do with that and I'll continue this time. Just it's been churning in my head and it so happens that today's passage is also what the going deeper devotional passage is. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 3a. Okay. So let me read that passage. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. So the, the context really in the New Testament, in the time of Jesus, is that the line of David had fallen on hard times. The promise given to David in 2 Samuel chapter 9 was that you will always have a king on the throne. I will establish an everlasting dynasty for you. But they had not had a king since the Babylonian exile. Even when they came back, and we know that Zerubbabel and others, there were those who were from the line of David, but nobody was ruling. There was no king. And then they were conquered by one empire after another. And at this point in time, those in charge, either the Levites, those scholars, those scribes, you know, so Pharisees, Sadducees, the high priests, all of that, or half-breeds like King Herod, or foreigners like the Romans. And I was hearing this sermon by Bruce Gore, and he was making the point that things had become upside down in Israel. For example, Mary and Joseph, both are from the line of David, means they are from royalty. And yet they are living in poverty. And I guess pretty much Bethlehem is insignificant. The Judean, all those places are fairly insignificant. And all the powerful people, all the rich people in Jerusalem, none of them are from the line of David. Okay, so things have become upside down. So in a sense, what it's saying, what, what it's saying, you know, the stump of Jesse. What does the stump mean? The tree has been cut down. And only the stump remains. In a sense, the tree of Jesse or therefore the tree of David was nothing more than a stump, a mighty tree that has been cut down. But it says a stump of Jesse and roots. The good news is that the stump still has its roots and it therefore can still grow. Okay? In fact, it reminds me when I was reading this, it reminds me of Isaiah chapter 6, the call of Isaiah. And then God, God tells him, who will go for us? And he says, we will, I will go, here I am. And what does God say? Prophesy until everything is destroyed, until the land is laid waste. And he ends with, but as the terebinth and oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. And in a sense, there was a holy seed in Israel, in Judah in Bethlehem from which, which was like the stump in the land from which something was going to emerge and that something of course was someone. Again we go to Isaiah 11, it says a branch will bear fruit. Okay, so there is parallelism here, a shoot will come and a branch, it is the same, same picture. Sometimes those words are used interchangeably, a branch will bear fruit. Okay. This branch is going to come forth from the stump, from what appears to be lifeless and what has been abandoned and destroyed. In fact, this word, remember I said in uh, when we did Bethlehem, Egypt, Nazareth, I said that there is no passage, he shall be called a Nazarene, there is no real verse like that. So one of the references that they look at is this particular verse, a branch will bear fruit because the word for branch sounds like the word for Nazareth, Netzer. So they make that connection but I didn't think so, like I said last uh, or week before last, last week maybe that it refers to some other passages, okay. But the point is that the branch is coming forth. When it seemed like the line of David was nothing but stump and roots, a branch came and a branch that was fruitful, a branch will bear fruit. And I was thinking that when Jesus tells us, I am the vine and you are the branches, he is using imagery that was first used for him. Before we were the branches, he was the branch. You know, 
the same thing therefore a branch will bear fruit he was a fruitful branch and now he tells us you be connected to me and you also have to be fruitful branches and you will see that in this passage everything that applies to jesus then applies to us as well starting with this jesus was a branch that bore fruit he tells us that you are the branches and it's not just in not just jesus in the in the gospel of john in isaiah also it comes up isaiah chapter 60 verse 21 Isaiah 60 verse 21 says, Then will all your people be righteous and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands for the display of my splendor. And that word, they are the shoot, that word is branch actually. So in Isaiah also, God calls the Messiah the branch. And then he says, those who will come from the Messiah, his followers, will be the branches or the shoot that he has planted for the display of his splendor. Okay, So that's the first thing, that a branch comes from the stump of Jesse. And similarly, we are also called branches and shoots. Okay, we have that same identity that Jesus had. Okay, However, the fact that it looked like a stump and all of that was not significant. What was significant according to this passage it what was, is what was within. The spirit of the Lord, that was what was important. Yeah, <coughs> Which is why they could say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He is from Galilee. It did not matter. <coughs> what mattered was what was within. The spirit of the Lord. Okay? So it says, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. That word rested, that word rest is significant. It means it has that sense of settling, of remaining. Okay, so for example, <coughs> Noah's ark, Noah's ark rested on Ararat. Okay? It was not going to go anywhere now. It came and it stayed. And that is the significance of this word being used for the spirit will rest on him. It is not used of other occasions in the, New, in the Old Testament. For example, Gideon, the spirit of the Lord fell on Gideon. The spirit of the Lord rushed on Samson. The same word is not used. That word rested is not used. Because that sense is the spirit of the Lord came, did his work and left. And then he came back later and did his work and left. It is only used twice of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. When, when the spirit, when the spirit of the Lord is given to the seventy elders in Numbers, and it says that they prophesied, and then they didn't prophesy again. But if you look in your footnote, it says and they prophesied and continue to prophesy. So we're not sure which is the meaning. Either way, what the Holy Spirit did for them continued, because. They were, they then were like the second line leadership who helped, who helped uh, Moses in what he had to do. And so obviously the anointing of the spirit remained for whatever they had to do. The second time the word is used and the only the second time is for when they look at Elijah, Elisha and say the spirit of Elijah is now resting on Elisha. And we know that the spirit of the Lord rested on Elijah and is now resting on Elisha and he didn't come and go because they were able to minister whenever they wanted to. Yeah, So that sense of settling, remaining, not going anywhere which is which was fairly unique in Old Testament times but that is the word that is spoken of what will happen for the Messiah. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Okay. And of course we know that is true for Jesus. We know that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now it doesn't tell us in the New Testament that he was filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. But I can't imagine it is not so because that's what's told of us for John. That John the Baptist would be filled from birth or even from his mother's womb. All the more it would be true for Jesus who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Okay? However, we are told about something amazing that happened at his baptism. And these are the words that are used in Matthew, Mark and Luke. The Holy Spirit came upon 
descended, alighted, which are all to do with coming upon, from above, coming below. But John uses another word. He uses the word remained. The old word, the old uh, King James Version word was abide. Jesus says abide in me and I will abide in you. <coughs> Our version says remain in me and I will remain in you. That same word is used for the spirit coming upon Jesus. So, remaining, abiding, settling. <coughs> now, as I said, what is true for Jesus is true for us. And we see that in Acts chapter 2 verse 3, at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon them, the fire, the wind. And our versions say, the, the tongues of fire came and rested on them. That word rested means sat down. So again that sense of, you know, when you, are, when you sit down, you are settling. See, that, that sense of settling. And so the fact that the Holy Spirit came and rested on, settled on, remained on, abided in the Messiah is also true for each one of us. That we live in, an, in the age of the Spirit where the Holy Spirit rests upon us. He remains. He is not going anywhere. In a sense, that is why he can be grieved. And that he just, he just leave us when we did something bad. But he stays and he is grieved by the things that we do. Okay. So the first thing is, Jesus is the branch who bears fruit and we also are branches who are called to bear fruit. The second is, uh, more significantly, the Spirit of the Lord rested on him and the Spirit of the Lord also has rested upon each one of his followers, each one of his disciples. And then we see that there are six characteristics of the Spirit of the Lord upon this person, upon the Messiah, right? And similarly, therefore, upon us also. And here I'm just going to take it from my devotion, okay? Firstly, the Spirit of Wisdom. What is that? It is the ability to apply God's principles to life's circumstances. To take what is in the scripture and to apply it to practical situations. Jesus did not quote scripture blindly, but with discernment he applied it to specific situations. And that is what we are, that is what we can do as well. Secondly, the spirit of understanding, the ability to discern between alternatives. And Jesus was able to discern the heart of every matter and judge accordingly. He was able to understand or to perceive or to go beyond what, what was being seen or sensed. Thirdly, the spirit of counsel, the state for the ability to advise and guide others. And as we have already seen, for example, from uh, when we saw uh, uh, in Isaiah chapter 9, Jesus' titles, wonderful counselor. Jesus is the counselor. And that is why the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus is also the counselor. Okay, Jesus is the one who is called counselor and so is his spirit. The spirit of might or power, the ability to bring to pass what he will to happen. Okay. I've always said, no, that to be willing and able, it's no point being just willing if you're not able. The spirit of might means that Jesus was able and we are able. Jesus performed many miracles and supernatural signs and wonders when he was on the earth and he continues to do so today through the Holy Spirit in his people. Remember this, Jesus could not do any miracle apart from the Holy Spirit. He did not come in his incarnation able to do signs and wonders. He needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord was resting upon him for might or for power and therefore the same is true for us. The Spirit of Knowledge, at one level, knowledge is knowing something. And for example, we have the gift of the word of knowledge where you know something like Jesus knew about the Samaritan woman. He knew her past. That was through the spirit of knowledge. But in the Bible, it's more than that. The 
spirit of knowledge knowledge is not just knowing intellectually but knowing experientially okay, to know to be intimate with and we know that jesus had genuine relationships you know varying degrees of intimacy with his disciples with the women who served him with the people he encountered and most of all with his father okay that famous saying no you can know about god or you can know god there's a world of difference between those two statements and the sixth characteristic the spirit of the fear of the lord that is the attitude of reverence and piety towards god jesus related to his father with the deepest possible intimacy and yet with the greatest depth of reverence you look at these these six six words wisdom uh, counsel understanding knowledge power fear of the lord you know four out of the six are to do with the mind not very glamorous the glamorous one is the spirit of power spirit of might and most of us would be happiest with having that and yet jesus was most delighted with the fear of the lord it says he will delight in the fear of the lord or his delight will be in the fear of the lord that word delight in the old testament the literal meaning of that word is smell smell okay now an example of that is is used in genesis 8 verse 21 god smelled the sweet aroma of noah's sacrifice that word is smelled it can also mean delighted in okay and that is what is happening here jesus is delighting in what the spirit of the lord has given him the fear of the lord of all the gifts jesus received from the spirit he was most delighted with the one that characterized and formed in a sense his relationship with the father okay all the others are to do with people wisdom knowledge understanding counsel power the fear of the lord had to do with his relationship with his father you know the word that defined his relationship was fear okay and of course we know that that fear does not mean being afraid in the old testament there is a word which is exclusively being afraid okay? it's translated dread uh, horror that's all it means but the word that is translated fear in fear of the lord we know also means reverence piety or to be in to be in fear of the lord to be in awe of him those words are those that those are the words that uh, describe that word fear of the lord okay if you don't believe me believe moses moses comes down from the mountain he talks to the people and he says do not be afraid i have come to show you the fear of the lord do not be afraid i have come to, to show you or to teach you the fear of the lord two very different things yeah that fear is reverence but also the deepest intimacy that's that word father okay jesus knew what was of supreme importance and he delighted in it above all else he had all of this by the power of the spirit but he knew what was what it was to delight in he knew what was the most important that he of all the prophets could call god father and he made the way for all of us to call god father hmm? romans 8 was 15 says by the spirit we cry abba father you know the reason why i believe paul put in that word i mean other he could have just said by the, by the spirit we call him father he would have used the hebrew word peter or whatever but he chose to put in the aramaic word by the spirit we cry out abba father okay because he do know how to translate that word any better okay? we often say that it's saying daddy or things like that okay pop no 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 it's not there is a familiarity but there's also a reverence when you say pops you don't have the reverence over there you know 
so there was this this word abba was a word with, that was deeply personal deeply intimate but at the same time was also deeply reverential in that culture they knew that that was what was happening you had that intimate relationship but there was also deep reverence in that relationship okay and that is what jesus had with the father and again that is what we can have by the spirit we cry the spirit of rested on him he delighted in the fear of the lord and we are told by the spirit we cry abba just like jesus cried abba with both the intimacy and the reverence and if you learn from jesus that is what we are meant to delight in above all else that is the most precious gift that the spirit of the lord gives us that we can say abba that we can have the fear of the lord both intimacy and reverence just like jesus what was the result of the spirit resting upon jesus this branch okay verse verse uh, 10 same chapter chapter 11 verse 10 in that day the root of jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples the nations will rally to him and his place of rest will be glorious the result of the spirit of the lord resting on this person who we now know as the messiah who we know was jesus was the kingdom advancing to the ends of the earth something that was unique in jewish understanding it was all about their land it was all about their dynasty all about their people but here the root of jesse will be a banner for all peoples all nations okay the kingdom advancing to the ends of the earth it's of course the great commission but the great commission was given to us go and make disciples of all nations yeah and this great commission this result that was released by jesus it has to be completed by us not in our own strength because the spirit of the lord rests on us other we can't do it it's all to do with the spirit of the lord resting on us okay it will be accomplished by people upon whom the spirit rests the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding the spirit of counsel the spirit of might or power the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the lord okay even as we come to the end of this christmas season and we look at jesus and we look at this messianic prophecy and say oh this was true of the messiah this was true of the one who came down and became man we recognize it is also true for each one of us we are the branches even as he is the branch <laughs> the spirit of the lord has rested upon us remained upon us just as he rested and remained upon him and therefore all that is true for him by the spirit of the lord is true for us and therefore what he has fully accomplished in in principle we are called to uh manifest on the earth by that same spirit and by the same gifts that he has given us but just like jesus recognizing what is most important is the fear of the lord what is most important is is that relationship of deepest intimacy and deepest reverence from out of that everything else will flow and the nations will be one for jesus by people who have all of these six qualities but especially delighting in the fear of the lord okay let's pray and holy spirit we thank you for what rests upon us because jesus went to heaven and he sent you to us and i pray holy spirit this morning 
each one who's hearing this word pour out a fresh wisdom and understanding and counsel <coughs> and knowledge and might and most of all lord pour out the fear of the lord <coughs> cause us to delight in the fear of the lord <coughs> lead us into that deepest intimacy and deepest reverence may it set us apart may it characterize our lives and may we bear the fruit that you have chosen us to bear in jesus name amen